I'm going to enter stage left. Ha ha. So that I don't walk in front of the artwork. Look at that. Hi, everybody. Big day. We are starting week number two on the Lisa D Show live stream that airs at 6 p.m. weekdays, central time, because we're located in Evanston, Illinois, just north of Chicago. In fact, we share a state line. I see everybody jumping in. Hi, Maggie from Minnesota watching. Love it. Thank you, Liz from Evanston Made being here. Um, so we have a really exciting week booked out. And just like last week, we are going to follow the same format. We're going to feature an interview uh, for roughly, oh, there's Ben Blunt, the letterpress artist walking by. Um, we're going to feature an interview with an artist who is living and working in Evanston. Ideally, they're an Evanston Made member. And they're going to talk to us about what they're making right now. Right now, um, not necessarily in demo format, but just really right now, people are spending a lot more time sheltering in. Hi, Brianna. Great to see you. And we want to know what artists are up to. We want to know what's on their canvases. So essentially, behind me is a beautiful, let me get out of the way. Look at this. Look at that. This is a painting by Amanda Evanston. Yes, fans. Her name is Amanda Evanston. Um, she is a fantastic painter who lives in the West Village Arts District just down the street from me. The show is really helping us get very small and focusing who's on the block. These are the people in my neighborhood. <laughs> so she is a fantastic painter who focuses predominantly in the area of floral, right? So she does a lot of flowers, a lot of um, very fun, lots of movement, lots of color. Hi, Jill Birschbach. Hi, Annie Coakley. And essentially, uh, she and she does stray from that. She does do some faces. She does do some giraffes. There was a new line of giraffes. But if you go to her website, which is amandaevanston.com, you will see her dedication to lots of color and lots of expression and lots of movement. And we're gonna interview her today. We're gonna see what's on her canvas. Um, she is an Instagram star, a lovely, um, a very, very lovely of her. She did a professional development series with the Evanston Made Artist members on how to rock Instagram. And you are all about to see in just one minute um, what rocking Instagram means, right? Because um, I'm going to invite Amanda. Hi, how are you? I'm so wonderful. How are you? I'm good. Nice. We had to switch location um, at the last minute. Oh, sorry. That's okay. okay. You have so many fans, Amanda. Like the feed is blowing up and you can you see all their comments and all their love? Um, a little bit, yes. Now I am. Yeah. Now that I am actually looking, I am. Um, anyway, how are you, Lisa? <laughs> how are you? I sat, I'm wonderful. Like, Ten seconds outside your wonderful house the other day, and um, it's such a weird social dynamic because you can't like. I don't know. It's not the usual. We're all supposed to like not communicate with each other unless it's through a device like this. So, unless it's through a device, but you spend a lot of time talking to your fans and your customers and your clients through Instagram. Like you do this a lot. I tr I try not as much. Um, it's weird the dynamic of being home all the time. You kind of fall out of the rhythm. When I would go um, to the studio every day, it was sort of easier to say, okay, it's whatever it's lunchtime it's break time let me get on the horn right now and show mm -hmm. what i'm doing or what i'm painting now um i'm just sort of stealing chunks of time to make art or stuff and so it's not always it's not always that interesting i don't really have <laughs> things to report which is funny because the things that i actually like watching people do on social media is not necessarily very interesting i'm sorry my child is like uh, 
Whoa. Is your child gonna be on oh, the yeah. oh, yeah. Say hi. Say hi, hi. Yes. how are you? Hi. Um yeah, she was very insistent. She was banging on the door as I was trying to get on the horn with you. So she has a lot to say. She has a lot to say. And now she has art supplies. So hi. Wonderful. Hi. And she's so happy because you're home so much more. Yeah. Uh well, she misses Maria is her usual babysitter and she's like, Where's Maria? I don't know. Why are you here all the time? What ha why don't I Right, we're, yeah. So anyway, that's fun. <laughs> that's super fun. And are you still making it into the studio several days a week? No, no, um, barely ever. If I do, it's maybe half an hour to pick up supplies. Um, my, luckily we did a little bit, not construction, but we shuffled around some stuff in the house. So that yeah. what used to be Ella's room, if you can see, there's still a changing table and all mm -hmm. is now my makeshift studio situation um so that I, I mean i still i feel very fortunate to have a place to make stuff that most of the time i can um lock off but not art supplies and toddlers don't mix as much as i would love and she does get into them she does make stuff but uh yeah trying to have a regular um studio practice when you're uh constantly dealing with stuff that's toxic and messy and could put your kid in the emergency room when you don't want to go to the emergency room. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the real deal. And you, I saw you recently came out with a line of faces, which you- No, I'm working on them. Okay. Um, they're in progress right now. These are oh, like- there they are. They're pieces of them. And what they're actually, I, the working title is sort of like portraits in COVID. What, and what I normally do, this is I think my fourth series of faces. And normally when I do the faces, I have like, um, I name them after people. They're always called the friend who, blah, blah, blah. So it might be like the friend who brought you a casserole after you had surgery or something like that. These are all things that people have like offered up and submitted. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a, with this whole like pandemic thing, I think people have really done some interesting stuff. So the concept of what friendship is, and what people are doing, um, mm -hmm. it's just been really wonderful to kind of collect little stories of stuff that people are doing that's wonderful. So I started turning those into titles, and now I have a bunch of titles, and I'm collecting more, and now I need a portrait. So they're coming along. And what medium are the portraits made out of? What are you Collage making? Collage and acrylic, um, and a little bit of pastel, some charcoal, no oil. I never no did. oil in the house. No. no. Or in the studio. I kind of made that distinction a while ago. There's some, this kind of an old school, you run an oil studio or a water-based studio. And I, I'm, I don't do oil. I just can't. I like working fast and oil takes forever to dry. It's expensive. Drives the price up for the, for the buyer. Mm -hmm. Acrylic is really good. So. And are you still doing, are you doing any classes right now online? Are you well, online? So I have pre-recorded classes. Mm -hmm. um, so there's one that's always available. It's called the secret garden. And there's one that's on sale right now. That's half off. That's just like individual flowers. And then about every other week I'll do a live, not unlike this and mm -hmm. <laughs> other people to come and we, make stuff and that's wonderful but it's also a challenge because um when you when you do a workshop or when you do a pre-recorded class you kind of cater to the target audience you know if you're talking to seasoned artists or people who are hobbyists or as, you know just ladies on a sunday afternoon i'm sorry it's can you hear her <laughs> barely and it's so lovely don't okay. edit her out she's fine <laughs> i appreciate it. I appreciate that. I don't want to distract from your, uh, what you're doing here and the importance of no, the it's it's like, a perfect addition in the background. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, but when you teach, uh, painting live, we have mm -hmm. from preschoolers to, um, people who are just bored at home. Yeah. Um, we have retirement communities that are like, I don't even understand. They're projecting it on like big screen TVs and like giving oh, cool. people. There's a lot going on. So 
that's a challenge because you don't know who is actually getting it and who is not. Um, right. But the I give a hashtag for the for the paint at the end of the um, the live stream, and people are posting their work, and it's incredible. It's really really beautiful. So I'm I'm very rewarding to me. You know, when you when you share something and you see somebody take it and they put their own legs on it, and um, it's ex it's it's very. This is such a weird time and it's very isolating so to actually be able to see people doing cool things. Um, and your reach is so vast because the first time you did that, the hashtag, um, I saw people posting and tagging you on Instagram from all across the United States. Like you are not just working with the people on your block. Oh, no, no. no. Um, there's people in Tasmania. <laughs> Mania, not just like Australia way down at no Tasmania. What um, doing this? So yeah, it's 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 amazing. And wow. it's weird. It's weird that it would take um, a health crisis to to form these sort of bonds of connection. It's really extraordinary. So well, and you also oh the whole entire crew who was just watching the Beto live stream is now with us. So thank you everybody from El Paso, Texas, who's making a big presence be known. Um, my favorite before you but before this pandemic you've had a very big reach of people all over the place from Tasmania to Pasadena who love your work do you have an idea of what makes you so connective and your work so um meaningful and authentic to people um I have theories on this, and it's interesting that you mentioned El Paso. I think we talked about this once, but um, when I run my numbers at the end of the year, for the last three years, about half of my work, my sales volume, goes to Texas. I sell to Texas. Why they're buying, I've never lived in Texas. I have no family connections. I don't know why. I, yeah, but it does well in Texas. Interesting. Um, so people have different flavors of, you know, their aesthetic enjoyment. Mm -hmm. um, Instagram has been very kind to me, you know, as an artist and what I make. I think it's a great medium. It attracts people who um, are visual people. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some people who are like auditory people or somebody who don't get it unless they read it. If you're a person who like gets it based on, see, I'm sorry. Somebody's reading Goodnight Gorilla. Oh, um, Goodnight Gorilla, that's a good book. That's a good very one. good. It's that's a good, good. one. Um, <laughs> but Instagram is a great medium for artists because um, it's the people who are on here are into visuals already. There are plenty of people mm -hmm. who um, watch me or um, are, are on you know, Instagram all the time, whether they care about me or not. Only a fraction of them will ever even be interested in buying from me. But the fact uh, that they show up in their phone mm -hmm. pretty much every day, at least at least weekly, um, and I try to be a decent human being. I try to show a little bit of myself, and 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 you know the trust factor is there. Um, in the course of a year, if that person is in the market to buy art, the likelihood of it being me is is fairly right. good. Not and you know it. what? You have said that before. You've said that art sales is a very long cycle. Yeah. And do you believe that if you ping people enough times and are super annoying that they eventually give in? Or do you no. just feel like if you wait it out, they'll come to you eventually? You have to wait it out. And that's an interesting um, an annoying model. If you've ever taken any kind of like <laughs> crash course on like sales, mm -hmm. um, you know, first person pitching and things like that, all the things you have to do, all the advertising concepts that like a person has to see something three times before they'll absorb it. Right. All that is true. Um, but a person can um, like my work, they can afford my work, they have a space for my work. And they still won't pull the trigger on buying it until mm -hmm. there's some sort of experience external prompt and that um that's been interesting to me i've had the privilege now of having you know the gallery where i actually get to sell stuff 
I get lots right. of people come in, lots of people will visit, lots of people will talk and we'll chat and I know the names of their kids and I'll do everything. But the thing that actually gets them to come in and like pull out the wallet mm -hmm. is another thing. It's always like, oh, their sister-in-law is coming next month. Oh, they're going to have a dinner party. Oh, they got a bonus and they want to celebrate. Oh, they were on vacation and they didn't get that thing in Santa Fe. So they come really want, we have a heart for art. It's always like some other factor. Mm -hmm. the exception to that um, is, is that thing about vacation art. I feel like we've talked about this before, but when people um, right. are in a place that they're not on a regular basis, if they love a piece, yeah. Yeah. It'll go home. It'll go home. They don't wait on it. Anybody else? Yeah, they're going to wait. And, um, and that's also been kind of good for me because what happens is somebody waits and then they don't get it. And then they come back six months later and they're like, oh, I'm going to get the thing. And I'm like, hon, that sold four months ago. Right. Like, what? <laughs> you don't have more in the bag? Like, no. So that, that builds up a decent um, commission basis, which has been a great, um, you know, at a time like this where nobody's really buying things. I have right. people that I can send the email to and say, you know, that commission you were thinking about, why don't we get that ball rolling? Right. Maybe I'll give them a financial incentive to say, you know, this is what I'll give you a discount if we can do this over. Right. Okay. So, and you do, right. You keep people in your pipeline, as it were. You have a very <laughs> professional element to everything that you do. Talk to me a little bit, because I know that um, we, Tiago, who's on this project, shot some B-roll of your studio. And for those of you who are just jumping in, we're talking to Amanda Evanston. She has a physical studio and gallery storefront on Chicago Avenue between Dempster and Green Greenwood. something, Green, Greenwood, and it's by Stumble and Relish. How, yeah. Yeah. how big of a game changer was you getting inside that physical space for your awareness or was, did, did the physical studio and gallery space not make that big of a difference because all the world sees you on Instagram? Um, both. I mean, in the, in the, in terms of like sales, um, it's not what pays the bills. It, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it pays for itself and then some, but like if I was reliant on that space alone, I'd be in big trouble. Mm -hmm. um, it's been interesting to see people and what actually, like how they move in and they, and they look at the art and they're like, well, this is different. This is not, this is, ooh, what's going on here. See what people are attracted to. That's been really interesting for me, but it's also a little bit toxic because then you start feeding the beast of like, well, everybody likes the piece with the white flowers. Why don't I just do white flowers? Right. Are you like, oh, everybody wants to see, right, pictures of giraffes, so I'm going to make, like, are you pivoting to what the marketplace wants? No, well, no, but I, I am cognizant, you know, there's sort of a Venn diagram. There's things that I want to paint and there's things that people want to buy. They overlap uh -huh. a little bit in the middle. That's where I spend 90% of my time. Nice. In the middle, this is such, and also you get to do all this market research by being the gallery owner, as it were, yeah. you're get to do all the research. Yeah. Well, and you're a gallery owner too. I mean, I bet when you, you hang a show, sometimes you have an idea like this is going to be hot. This is going to be great. And sometimes it is, but sometimes people just don't respond to it. There's things that I hang up and I'm like, this is going to be crazy. And three years <laughs> bought it. it. And that's, and that's not fun for me. <laughs> right. That's um, not it's fun. not fun for anybody. No. And then there's a fire sale and then you get rid of stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And we've had, that's actually last year to celebrate my first anniversary, we did a fire sale and it was fantastic. I mean, it was a lot, we moved a lot in a very short period of time, but um, it's not, uh, that's not going to happen this year. So, and sure. Right online when it's large is difficult so you can discount stuff but that doesn't mean it's gonna move so right and are you also um since now that you've got you know a roommate who's tiny in your life do you think yeah. that you're gonna morph into any like doing more youth oriented stuff or are you gonna start teaching that no <laughs> that was a quick no amanda no. <laughs> i get asked that well no it's not that i get asked that it's um 
I want to say this diplomatically because I know somebody will watch this at some point in time and take this the wrong way. But right. I, children um, in America 2020, there's a huge chunk of the portion of the population that they, they look at a, a thing of paint and they assume this is made for a child, that this is something that painting is for children, that art making is something we foster in children. Oh. And um, I would like to make it my life's battle cry um, to say that's horseshit. And I don't, can I curse on this? Sorry. Yes, you can. <laughs> um, you can curse all sorry. you Sorry, I didn't mean to ding the explicit button. No. Um, I would like, I, I would like nothing more than for that to um, be stopped. So I, there's absolutely nothing wrong with children making art. I love it. I want that for my kid. But that corner of the world and the internet is very thoroughly covered. Right. The, okay. the, the adults can make art without a whole lot of formal training. And it's just a matter of getting comfortable with materials. Um, I think it's not only something that can be done. I think it's very important. I think our culture is filled with a whole lot of um, negative uh, negativity and, and closed-mindedness because people never gave themselves permission to make ugly stuff with their crayons. Like, yep. like somebody's mom told you everything needs to be pretty and that caused a ripple effect of uptightness and ignorance that we're kind of reaping what we sow on a, on a couple generations of that. So I would love nothing more mm -hmm. than for people to quit thinking that art is for kids. It's more than that. It's that and then some. And I think it's important. And you, on your website, one of my favorite, I mean, in addition to the picture, I just love the picture that you have on your about page because it shows deep enthusiasm for what you do. But you, you reference that you feel as though you've won the lottery, that in your oh. career as an artist, you get to be one. But it obviously wasn't easy. It took 10,000 hours. Oh, yeah. But you're doing it. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm doing it, and you know, um, uh, God willing, I will continue to do it in whatever capacity I'm, I'm, you know, allowed to keep going. There's nothing like a good pandemic to make it spicy and make uh -huh. <laughs> how that's going to work out. Spicy. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to be good. Uh, no, I'm going to be good. I'm not worried about that. I just may have to shuffle my means of, of revenue to be a little bit more diverse, which is not a bad thing. So yeah, I'm okay with that. But no, I think I think I am I I have all sorts of, of extraordinary honors every day. You know, my list of gratitudes in the morning is uh, never short. So for me to then say, well, I get to go and putter around with paint and make beautiful things, and then I get to take pictures and I get to post it on the internet and I get to go over to Lisa's house and she wants to hang it on the wall. Like mm -hmm. really, who gets to say that? I do, um, and that's amazing. Yeah, and all the comments here, as, like people love your work, they love how honest you are, they love how real you are, they love how much you share, they love the way that you bring yourself to the canvas. I mean, it's, I think one of the reasons you're so connected as an artist is because you are very real and there is no BS. And your work is, it owns the messiness. Oh, like yeah. your style owns the messiness and it's really the best part of it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's very, um, it would, I take no credit for that. I'm just naturally very messy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very messy in my work, in my house, in my, in my thoughts and everything. Um, but it, it serves me well. So yes. I'm happy to foster it and, and art is a good way to do that. I don't, I, it would never occur to me to try to be anything else. But that's very appealing. I, I think a good chunk of the people who buy my art are people who have never been given permission to be messy. And right. I stick it in the parameters of, you know, a canvas and hang a price tag on it. And it, that's very appealing. That's very appealing. And also people saying that you're just the most favorite teacher. You're the best, most honest teacher. Do you, are you responsible for launching a lot of art careers? I don't know a lot of art careers. I definitely know of a lot of people. I'm sorry, I'm trying to reach my <laughs> um, I there definitely a lot of people who now take art very seriously, um, who've definitely 
sold some some work. Um, mm -hmm. There's been a few solo shows. There's been people who now do, they'll take what I teach and then they'll distill it into like, you know, um, a paint night business. You know, they'll they'll gather people around and then they'll teach uh -huh. them, make a side income. And um, that's a great, I'm thrilled. I'm absolutely thrilled. Anything I can ever do to help somebody make a buck doing something they enjoy, hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Awesome. And I'll, another thing that I have to thank you so much for is your beautiful banner, the thank you helpers. Oh, yeah. There's a few of those um, around town. And then there's, I, I need to do like a little video where I, the montage, I think, I don't know how many we're up to, at least 30. There's at least yeah. 30 around the country. There's a couple in Canada, too. Um, but just so yeah, great. people doing yeah. wonderful things. People are so desperate right now to have anything to communicate gratitude or, or thankfulness or I mean because we're all stuck inside and it, yeah. we're told that that's really the most helpful thing we can do and yet you feel so helpless and it's hard yeah and sharing beauty I mean what we kept hearing from Evanston made member artists were just like we want to go inside studios we want to see what people are making we want to talk to the artists we want to Canada loves you Amanda we've got Jen from hey. Canada, Canada loves I you. can't see the comments I don't know what they're saying you influence my work and really push me to a new level. I totally love Amanda's chaos, AKA mess. I mean, people are like just fawning over you. That's so awesome. Um, hey. Take all the love, but I'm just so grateful that you, um, you share yourself so willingly. It's really, it's awesome. The pleasure's mine. So, <laughs> and it was beautiful hearing Ella's little voice behind us today. I mean, that's just freaking adorable. I, I hope she, Ella, can you say hi? Hi, Ella. Yeah. She's very busy. She's, she's very busy in stuff. yellow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she's she doesn't care. Right now. <laughs> she got a COVID haircut, I was saying, and um, I didn't, that was fun. That was fun. <laughs> it was like a big snaggle tooth of bang hanging down. I'm like, I'm an artist. I'm supposed to know how to do this. No, yeah. it actually, there's been a lot of comments that her haircut is amazing. Oh, good. Um, so good job, mom. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. It's, I used to, that was one of my, I was saying this in my stories earlier. Like I'm, I made a good amount of money in high school, like cutting hair for friends and their boyfriends. I was like, this is how I, mm -hmm. I know how to cut hair. So I thought, but it's been 20 years since I really had to do it. And then I did it and I, and, and anyway, nobody's going to. I like that you did it. To your daughter and not you. That's nice. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to be carrying this guilt for a long, long time. For a very long time. All right. Well, Amanda, I am so grateful for you. Thank you for being on today. Thank you for having me, Lisa. Thank you for doing this and for highlighting artists. I mean, not just now. And I know you, this, I'm at the beginning of the train. I have a feeling you're onto something really extraordinary with interviewing artists and highlighting people in their elements, showing what work is and how they're using it to better themselves and this we it's a weird weird <laughs> time like there's just no so I, weird. I am confident that we're all going to come out of this different people but i also i think we're going to come out a little bit better too it's humbling and it's inconvenient as hell and i really wouldn't wish you know illness on anybody but mm -hmm. for those of us that again have the honor and privilege of not having to make extraordinary crisis uh, sacrifices of our health or our life the mm -hmm. rest of us are gonna have to do some really we're gonna have to do a lot of growing and, and it's gonna be hard but we're gonna come out better people than we went in i have a feeling i have a feeling it's gonna be the creatives who lead us to a new journey so yeah this amen. was so awesome it was so great connecting with you thank you amanda Thank you for having me, Lisa. I'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye, Ella. Bye, Elmo. And all the books that she was reading. Oh, my gosh. How awesome is that? Amanda Evanston. I mean, really, we were talking about her line work being just so messy and gorgeous and amazing. And she, I highly encourage you to visit AmandaEvanston.com. Her work is spectacular. And she's my neighbor. She lives nine doors away and I feel like yes this is the weirdest time on the whole planet but this has been a awesome project connecting with all of you and talking to all the
creatives in Evanston who are getting us through this time. So thank you everybody for streaming. Everything goes up on YouTube after the fact. So if you miss the show, um, you get to watch it on the archives. And we'll be back tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central. We're gonna to talk to downtown Evanston about a really great campaign that they're launching, uh, selling t-shirts with proceeds going to support small business owners, especially small business owners in uh, the sort of downtown area who did not qualify for government bailout loans. So also last thing about Amanda's work, she has put several pieces in the windows of the gallery at 1100 Florence, we're on the northwest corner of Florence and Greenleaf. So you can walk by if there are people waiting um, and looking, just we ask that you stay six feet away. But yeah, there's a beautiful collection of Amanda's works in the windows. And you can also check them on amandaevanston.com. Thank you, Tiago. Thank you, Liz. And thank you everybody for watching. See you tomorrow at six.